everyone, it's Kelly for Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me for another soap making video. This is the third of the three wedding favour soaps that I need to make and today we are going to be making one in pink lychee. It has notes of lychee, peach, strawberry, melon, cyclamen, jasmine, amber and apple. Now she really liked the look of the red tea and lychee soap so I said we could make some little mini ones that look very very similar to that one so that's with the piping and the soap balls on top. So in my red jug here I have my oils and I have my lye water solution here which I'm going to pour down the stick blender. Um, I'm going to then mix it up and separate it out for the colours and we're still using that same colour palette with the Vintage Rose Mica, some of the Wisteria and the Nimbus Mica mixed together. I don't know if you can actually hear that on the camera, but they are the kookaburras. And for the last maybe two or three weeks, at this time every afternoon, they've been sitting around the houses just cackling away. It's such a lovely sound to me. I remember when we first came out to Australia, oh, when I was just a child and we came out for a holiday, I remember hearing those kookaburras singing and it was just the most amazing sound to me. And I've always loved hearing them sitting and cackling away in the trees. And I am very pleased to say that this fragrance oil is behaving beautifully. We've got some nice fluid batter again. So I'm very, very thankful for that. I am going to not test, tempt fate anymore. And I am going to get these into the mould. So first of all, we're going to do uh, another drop swirl into here because this is what she liked and then we are going to pipe the top of this one so we'll get most of this white in here probably come up to about three quarters actually oh yeah about there we'll go there really is no rhyme or reason to how you pour your soap and I'm just going to very carefully pour this in, getting it into all corners of the mould. Then we'll come in for this purple. Oh, the purple's thickening up a little bit. Now, I was hoping that this was going to stay nice and fluid for me because I wanted to do just something a little bit different on this soap because all of the others have had the same drop in it. I thought we might actually add a bit of a mica swirl in here as well. So I have some of that Nimbus mica which I have mixed up with some olive oil which is one of the oils in my soap batter and I've just poured that into the middle and now I'm going to finish pouring in these colours and the rest of these colours should really get that mica to swirl through and leave some really nice um, mica lines. Now because this one's setting up on me a bit here, I'm just going to give it a stir to loosen it back up. We'll pull down what's in the spout here as well. And that's loosened that up so we can pour whoop, that into the mould, not out of the mould. And then when I pour the rest of my white in, the, the movement of the white should really get those swirls going. Alright, just get that little bit there that I've thrown to the side. My white is still lovely and fluid. So as we pour that in, that should start moving those mica bits around and should also move all those other colours too. So that's a really good tip if you are wanting to do mica lines. Um, it doesn't really work so well if your batter is um, quite thick because the mica tends to then move up your soap and then it comes right up to the top and it just creates a big mess or it moves onto the sides of the soap and when people then touch the soap they get mica all over them whereas if you can get a really nice fluid batter your mica will sink into the soap and it will create those really nice lines so we'll get all these jugs scraped out and then i will come back and i will do the piping
Okay, so we are now ready to start piping it. My piping is still a little bit soft, but as mentioned in the first video, it is the 31st of October when I'm making these. So I've got a feeling, it's about five o'clock in the afternoon. I have a feeling the trick-or-treaters are starting to come round because I can hear dogs barking. My two have suddenly got very excited as well. So I'm just going to go with it and just go very gently while it is this fluid. So what I'm doing here, because we are again dividing this soap into two and like dividing it down the middle and then um, cutting it into the bars I'm actually doing four dollops across instead of my usual three and then we'll build it up from there so we're just going to keep going I've got a simple round tip on here but it's actually quite a smaller tip to what I would normally use to do the round dots and this is working out quite nicely at this sort of consistency. So this is going to look a little bit funny right now um, because once it's cut it will then start to look like the other little balls uh, or the other bars of soap that I do. So each of those will have their little soap ball. I'm just going to make that one a bit rounder. Now with this particular soap um, she actually wants 13 bars cut in half. So I will actually end up with four whole bars out of this that I can do as a whole bar. So what I'm going to do is go one, two, three, four, because my mould does the, um, oh, how many? It does 17. And I'm actually just going to do four of these bars as I would normally. So with the nice high piping here. Okay, so what I'm going to do on here first is I have some of the mica, that purple and the silver mixed together just to try and get that dusky lavender sort of colour and I'm just going to drizzle just a little bit over the top. And I also have some of that vintage rose. I've mixed both of these up in just a little bit of olive oil. It just gives it a little bit of extra colour on the top there. And then we have that vintage rose. I'm going to add some of that as well. Oop, I can hear, probably can't hear it on the... Um, camera but I have just heard some squeals going on so I kind of want to get the, um, the work shed shut up before everyone comes through. What I've got here are some clear melt and pour which I've put some blizzard mica into just to get them a little bit sparkly and we're going to pop one of these onto each of these little pipe tops so one for each soap. So when I first made the embeds for these, I tried to do a pale pink for the pink lychee, but they actually ended up being a really hot pink. So we, I went back to just doing them as a plain colour. But what I might do for these four extra ones, because they are just a little bit extra and fun, we will pop on the pink one into the top of them. And to finish it off, I'm going to give it a quick spritz with a little bit of Blizzard Mica. 
Okay, so here is Pink Lychee, the third of the three wedding soaps. And down the end here we have those four extra with the little pink ball. You can see it's all nice and glittery and shiny. And we've got those lavender and dusky rose colours that hopefully she's after. We're going to leave this one overnight to sit. And tomorrow afternoon I will cut it and we'll have a look and see what swell we've got on this one. Right, so we are back to cut pink lychee soap. It is smelling really good. It's got that really nice fruity sweet smell to it. It does have a touch of floral in it as well, which is really quite pretty. I'm going to line it up on the soap cutter, so I'll cut these pink ones off first because this end of my um, loaf of soap has got my test or my sample piece. And I know that when I, that cuts off, I get that raw end of the soap, whereas this soap here doesn't get that raw cut edge. I can see that the piping on this bar of soap has kind of lent over that way so I know that I'm going to be cutting these couple of soap balls when we go through but as long as I don't cut the soap balls on any of the wedding soaps I will be happy with that. It is looking pretty good so I am going to cut straight through and just go slowly because those pink ones I think they actually spun so I th maybe my soap's not quite ready for cutting yet but we'll see it does feel a little bit soft but we're going now so there's, there's no turning back so through we go I'm going to catch the end of this so it doesn't fall off and dent the edges And that's actually pretty good. Um, even though I thought I was going to cut those soap balls, I actually didn't. I'll show you this one here. So if we pull it out, you, you can see that the soap ball actually didn't get cut. I can see we've got some glycerin rivers through this one, uh, which is a bit of a shame. But it, this one did also get hot. It didn't crack like the first soap that we made. So here's one. You can see all of that silver mica swirl through this one which is really pretty how it's come up and kind of really um, goes with those colors as they were part of the color palette so what we'll do is grab this other pink one and then I'm going to do as I did with all those other wedding soaps I'm going to take the ones with the white balls and I'm going to cut them in half on my single bar cutter so I'm just going to pick them up as a whole because it's easier to make sure that they line up if they're kind of stuck to each other. Okay, so we have got the single bar cutter and I have it so it's lined up to be able to cut these bars in half. So we'll just pull three off this little section here and line them up onto the soap cutter and then we're going to go straight down through the middle there so this is what each of the bars will end up looking like so they all have their little soap ball on the top and all got that pretty lavender and uh, rose or dusky rose color through them here's another piece Unfortunately, I've not seen any hearts in this one like we did in the pink lychee soap, but the swirl on that is still really pretty, so I'm really pleased with it. I will be sending photos off to the bride-to-be to double check that she does like all of the designs on these soaps, and then they will be uh, wrapped up for her. We put down their little message, any message that they want on them and she's asked for their names and the date of the wedding so we'll package them all up nicely for her and they should all be ready to go for when she wants to pick them up. So I hope you have enjoyed watching me make um, this pink lychee, yes this one's the pink lychee, I think I said the wrong soap before <laughs> but I hope you have enjoyed watching me make the pink lychee soap 
Um, if you have, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you do have any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you haven't already, why not hit the subscribe button and um, hit the little bell as well. And it will let you know the next time I bring a soaping video out to you, which is about once every week. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, have a great one. Bye.